introducing my new AI report card. Today's video is a little bit technical, but I'm hoping to keep it high level so that it's understandable. And we're talking about a one page summary view of the metrics that matter. GPT-4 is out very, very soon. I'm hoping by the end of 2022, and it's gonna be a major advancement for artificial intelligence as a whole. And of course, for large language models, we've had quite a number of large language models come out since the advent of Transformer back in 2018, 2019. We had Google BERT, we had GPT-1 and GPT-2, which really gave birth to countries and institutions exploding with their release or announcement of large language models. And each time one of these models is released, a massive paper is released alongside it. The press go and read it and independent researchers give their translation. But sometimes it could be a really long process to get from a long paper, pick out the salient points and actually translate them, give them to the public or at least make them visible to the public. Remember the GPT-3 paper that came out in 2020. It was 75 pages long, about 33,000 words, not even including the references. And then it had supplementary material, including a four meg text dump of samples released on GitHub. Now that's a lot of information to go and digest and then translate and then interpret and then finally disseminate and allow other people to see what's actually inside those 33,000 words with the highlights, with the points that actually matter. So that's why I played around with a simple one page report card, just like you'd get at school, that can be released alongside these large language models and you don't have to go and read the paper and you don't have to wait for someone to sit there and interpret it. You've actually got it just like that, all in a one page snapshot. The reason I showed the chart at the beginning of this video only to April, 2022, is that something major happened in April, 2022. And we're gonna talk about that in a moment. For now, GPT-4 should be on its way. The original forecasts, the original predictions were very, very high. We had a platform called Metaculus that looked at some of the predictions for this massive, massive model. I actually put my own prediction in here. We had 449 predictions. The average was that GPT-4 will have 3.5 trillion parameters. We've got a little bump up towards the end of the graph, the right side of the graph here at 10 trillion parameters. A lot of voters thought that we'd get to 10 trillion parameters with GPT-4, including myself. I also put a vote here. And then this chart actually goes all the way up past 50 trillion parameters. Wouldn't that be outrageous to get there? Some AI labs have actually got close to this, but it's kind of a furphy. They haven't trained it to convergence or it's a sparse model, a mixture of experts model, which is not the same as the proper dense models like GPT-3 or Palm or Gopher or Chinchilla. Now, Chinchilla was the big change in April, 2022. I talked a little bit about this in my mid 2022 AI report. You can have a look at that video here. Chinchilla gave us a correction to how much data and how much compute we should be assigning per parameter to these models. This is the original chart. So this was released by DeepMind and it basically said for every trillion parameters, you should be feeding the model 20 trillion training tokens. You can think of tokens as words. So for every trillion parameters, we should have just a little bit more than 20 trillion words fed into that, where a token is actually three quarters of a word. Now with this in mind, GPT-3 should have been using a lot more tokens when it was being trained, a lot more words. They had 175 billion parameters. They used 300 billion tokens, but using Chinchilla's model, they should have been using 3.5 trillion tokens. So about 10 or 11 times what they were actually using. Here's my translation of that into the plainest language I can find. This is my token to parameter ratio. The non-optimal training here is 1.7 tokens is one parameter. That was what we used for GPT-3. Everyone seemed to follow those scaling laws, but they were not quite correct. The new optimal and efficient scaling laws are 20 tokens per one parameter. 
And I've gone into detail, including visual examples of what this looks like in my mid-2022 AI report. So have a look at that. But it basically says that once we get to 1 trillion parameters and the 20 trillion tokens needed to train it, we should be using about 30 terabytes of data, which is actually as many books as the entire US Library of Congress. Once we get past a trillion parameters and 20 trillion tokens needed for training, we're getting towards more books than there are published on Earth. So of course we need to go multimodal. We need to start feeding it with all the YouTube transcripts, with all the music on Earth, with all the videos on Earth. And of course you've seen that in all of the different multimodal models that can do things like translate images or even play around with robots and control. That is going to be part of the new paradigm, the new way of training these models. Again, using 20 trillion tokens per 1 trillion parameters. This is where my report card comes in. We're measuring this as kind of the very first point. And I'm using a ruler here along the top, the yellow ruler with the chinchilla scaling laws embedded in it. Let's do a close up of this ruler. So down the left hand side, we're looking at 2 trillion tokens per 100 billion parameters. If I scroll along here, you'll see that if GPT-4 hits 1 trillion parameters, it's going to need 20 trillion tokens. And we recently had the co-founder and chief scientist of OpenAI say on the 17th of June 2022 that trillion is the new billion. I think he's giving us a hint that GPT-4 will be at least a trillion parameters. And the ruler keeps going. So 10 trillion parameters there needs 200 trillion tokens of training data and we move all the way to the right here where we start hitting quadrillion which is the next measurement after trillion and when we hit one quadrillion parameters we're going to need 20 quadrillion training tokens which is just madness i think once you get past text and start feeding it with flattened images flattened videos that's going to be a whole lot easier but just to put it in perspective i think we're going to reach a quadrillion parameters sometime in the next few months. Maybe it's 12 months, maybe it's 24 months, maybe it's 36 months, but this is not as crazy as it sounds. Quadrillion is the next goal to hit using chinchilla scaling. So it's essentially 10 times more efficient, more optimal than GPT-3 in the past models were. Let's jump straight into the report card. We're doing eight metrics for the report card, four for technical, four for performance, and then we give an overall rating based on the grades. I've tried to keep it as simple as possible, it's one page. Let's do a sample or a demonstration while we're doing it. Let's do it for the Instruct GPT model, which is also known as Text DaVinci 002. And we're assessing this in July, 2022, even though this model came out in January, 2022, I'm a little bit late because I've just written the report card. I think this is a little bit unfair because back in January 2022, we didn't know how to scale properly. We didn't know how to optimize tokens and parameters. DeepMind helped us out again with the chinchilla findings. Let's do this anyway, just by way of example. The first thing we do is play around with the ruler. Obviously, Instruct GPT is based on GPT-3. It was just fine-tuned by humans. It's the same parameter count. It's 175 billion parameters. And the token count, as we know, should probably be up here somewhere, but it's not. It's 300 billion tokens. So we've got the visibility there of the ruler for token and parameter count. Let's jump into the technical subjects. The first one there, the model size. We're assessing this against other dense models. An A means it's within state of the art for models trained to convergence. An F means that it's smaller than 90% of models. Instruct GPT at 175 billion parameters is not that good. Consider the MTNLG model by Microsoft and Nvidia, or the Google Palm model, or even the DeepMind Gopher model, all towards 500 billion parameters, and 175 billion parameters suddenly doesn't look so good. This is all pre chiller. I would actually rate this a C, even back in January for this model size. The model optimization, have we aligned with Chinchilla? Is it one parameter per 20 tokens? Or do we get an F? Is it poor use of tokens in training? I'd give Instruct GPT a D 
in July 2022. Again, this is a really unfair rating. At the time, it was probably an A or a B. Data set. Are we using a large, diverse, and uncensored data set? Or are we using a data set that's monotone or there's a poor selection of data? I'd give the Instruct GPT, the original GPT-3 model, a very high grade here. You can go and have a look at my paper, what's in my AI, to see exactly what's inside GPT-3. There's some really clever data in there and I think the way that they used that baseline led a lot of other AI labs to follow what OpenAI had done with this Instruct GPT model. I'm gonna give this a B. Lastly, the special subject under the technical banner looks at anything special within a model. So for example, if we were assessing DeepMind Gato, we would definitely look at the special flattened tokens that included control signals and gaming button presses. That's a very special way of playing around with a large language model. GPT-3 had over 90 different languages in its training, making up 7% of the data set, was also very clever. In Instruct GPT, they used human fine tuning to make sure that the responses would be more truthful and grounded. I'm gonna give a B to this special technical assessment here, just because of the way that they handled both languages and truthfulness. Let's move down to the behavioral subjects. We can assess here the performance on major benchmarks and you'll see an A or a B is high performance on major benchmarks. A C to an F would be a low performance. GPT-3 and Instruct GPT is still doing very, very well. I'd give that a B. The IQ I've just split out from performance benchmarks. How high is it on major intelligence subtests like Superglue uh, and GPT-3? Instruct GPT still does pretty well on some of those big performance benchmarks, especially for IQ. Further down, truthfulness. Is it truthful, honest, and grounded for an A or a B grade, or is it overly hallucinative and does it have low truth for a C to an F grade? They obviously improved the model here, but no model is very truthful, and Instruct GPT is still not trustworthy enough to be using in an enterprise situation. So I'm gonna give this one a C minus, and I'm looking forward to this being improved even further. Instruct GPT actually brought an 84% improvement compared to the 2020 GPT-3, but it's still not good enough for, a, for most use cases. It still lacks honesty and groundedness. The last grade here is openness, availability to users. An A grade would be where the model and data is available for download with a permissive license. Think of Eleuther AI's amazing models and releases there where everything is open source and available for people. Or an F here where the model is closed to the public and is for internal research only. A lot of other models in comparison would be even less open than Instruct GPT, but it's still not getting a great rating. I'm gonna give it a C here because it's available to most of the public via an API. They still exclude some countries. And an overall grade and remarks here really sums up everything from the entire report card into one grade. I'm gonna give this model a B minus. I think it's a fantastic model. It's obviously the most popular model, but I know that we're gonna have some amazing improvements in the second half of 2022. The 540 billion parameter Palm model by Google might get a slightly different rating top to bottom here would give the model size an A+, because there's no one beating it trained to convergence right now. The optimization a D, the data set a B. The special row there would also get a B because the pathways architecture is just so fascinating to me. The way that they're attempting to emulate the outputs of the human brain. Then in performance, Palm of course is sitting at an A plus range in some of the metrics and especially in IQ, where it's towards the top of the leaderboard for Superglue, another A+. Truthfulness, I know it does a lot better. Even though this is a closed model, we've been shown that it does better with not hallucinating and having better truth scores. 
And lastly, the openness, because it's not available to the public, that brings its overall score down. I give that one an F and the overall or the final grade there would be an A. There we go, end to end, my new LifeArchitect.ai report card ready for the release of the next major model. Just giving you a bit of context and background there. Hopefully I've not gone too technical. We could go much more technical than that, but I want this to be accessible because these one pages I'll hopefully be releasing as models are released and you can get a bit of a feel for how that model sits, not just with size, but with a bunch of other metrics all in one page. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have the memo right here. Love artificial intelligence? Excited by the explosive progress of integrated AI? I am. Join my private mailing list, The Memo. Did you get that memo? Yeah, I got the memo. Get priority access to my articles, videos, and behind the scenes tips as soon as they're released with a monthly or annual subscription. Yeah. Didn't you get that memo? Lifearchitect.ai slash memo. I have the memo.